Welcome back to our Intermediate Financial Accounting class. Over our last few segments, we've been talking about changes in retained earnings and all the different things that cause those changes. We've talked about changes in estimate and done an example of how that flows through to retained earnings through this year's closing entries. And we started talking about changes in principle. We've talked about why they happen, we've talked about them conceptually, and we've started working a problem about a change in accounting principle. And in this case, we were working with DSI Incorporated that's decided to switch from FIFO to average cost. We gave you the calculations for step one, which was to recalculate all of the accounts affected by the change. So in DSI's case, that was inventory and cost of goods sold for all five years. Then we walked through and we recalculated retained earnings for each of those five years based on the new numbers. So we adjusted our net income based on how cost of goods sold would change for each of the five years. And then we started step three, which was to redo the financial statements based on the step one and step two calculations. So the first of the statements that we did was to build an income statement. Once we do an income statement, we can do a statement of retained earnings. And that's what we're going to do next, picking up where we left off. So this is DSI Incorporated statement of retained earnings four year ended December 31st. And again, we're reporting two years worth of information. So we have year five, which is the current year. We report that first in year four. And in the income statement, we put a note right away that this was adjusted. We don't do that on the statement of retained earnings. Hopefully you remember from way back when we talked about the statement of retained earnings originally, that the first line item in a statement of retained earnings is retained earnings January 1 as reported. And in this case, I would use the original beginning retained earnings number for year four. We'll do year five in a second. We always go back and do the adjusted year first, just like we did on our income statement in our last segment. So year four, beginning retained earnings, we find actually right here in year three, this 125 is ending retained earnings for year four. Beginning retained earnings for year four would be what I ended with in year three. So I'm gonna take that 85,000. That's the number that was reported as beginning retained earnings. My next line item is adjustments. And in this case, I have adjustments for the retrospective change in inventory valuation method. And what we're looking for is the net change to retained earnings from the 85,000 I have as my beginning retained earnings to what it really should be under the new method. And the best place to do this calculation is on our previous step two table. So I want beginning retained earnings in year four to be 77,000, but it's not at 77,000, it's at 85,000. So I'm gonna do a quick calculation. We'll bring it right down here. So I always start with the new number, what I want it to be so that my sign will come out right. My desired or updated retained earnings is 77,000. The current retained earnings, that's the 85,000 that's showing up right now in our balance sheet. And I'm gonna subtract desired minus current. $8,000 negative, it makes sense it's negative because I wanna go from 85 down to 77. So if I take desired minus current, it gets me the right sign and everything. So this $8,000 is what's gonna go right here that's our adjustment and before i finish this i have one last piece i need to add to this and that is c note 12 because that's where we're sending our investors to explain this change i take the eighty-five thousand minus that eight thousand that gets me to seventy-seven thousand, and that's going to be retained earnings january 1 as adjusted. And now in this first piece, I've told investors everything they need to know. I've told them how much I've changed retained earnings because of 
changing inventory method and where they can go to find the details so that they have this number. Next, I'm gonna finish the statement of retained earnings as I've done it in the past. I'm going to add net income and subtract dividends. And in this case, I'm gonna use the updated net income and dividends numbers from this table. So I wanna use the 43,000 and then my dividends have stayed zero so I don't have to worry too much about that number. So my updated net income was 43,000. Dividends are zero. So 77 plus 43 minus zero gives me a balance of $120,000. And that's my retained earnings, December 31. And I want this number to match up to the calculation I've made right here. And sure enough, there's that 120,000. That's exactly what I want. So this balances. Now I can move on to year five. Year five, my retained earnings January one as reported is this 120. So I bring this number up. I'm not making a special adjustment. I've already adjusted over here. So I don't have to do it again. So my retained earnings as adjusted is 120. Again, the adjustment is for what you saw in the past that is not the same as what it is in this set of financial statements. Since they've never seen a beginning retained earnings number reported for year five, they've seen ending year four, but never beginning year five, I don't have to put in a special adjustment here. Net income for the year, again, I'm gonna get that number right from this table, so 35,000. Dividend still zero, 120 plus 35. And I'm gonna make sure that this number balances with that number and it does, so I am good to go. Still working on step three, I've got the income statement done. I've got last year's and this year's numbers. Again, the rule is I show the current year plus any previous years I choose to report. So in this case, we've chosen to report one year. I've got the statement of retained earnings done. Same thing, current year and one year to look at. Last one I'm gonna worry about for now is the balance sheet. And again, we have two years worth of data that we're presenting. So we'll have year five and year four. And again, year four is different than it was last time you saw it. When you looked at my financial statements that are reported at the end of year four. So I have to warn you that it's different. We don't have a special line item in a balance sheet like we do in the statement of retained earnings. So again, this is as adjusted. C note, see we said 12 or whatever your company chooses to use. Now again, we didn't provide a very detailed balance sheet for the sake of time. Let's take a quick look at what information we do have. It looks like we've got cash, inventory, other assets, total assets. That takes care of our asset section. We've got liabilities, common stock retain earnings, liabilities and owner's equity. So those are our categories. I'm gonna go ahead and build that balance sheet, and then we'll start putting numbers in for it. We had cash, inventory, other assets, which allows us to get a total assets. And then we have a liabilities line. We had common stock and retained earnings, and that gave us total liabilities and equity. Let's go ahead and put these numbers in. Here are my numbers for my balance sheet. I'm not gonna use the 18,000, I'm gonna use the 13,000 down here, but I'll use the 15 and the 275 for my assets. For my liabilities and common stock, I will use those two numbers, but I won't use the 125 from retained earnings. I'm gonna get that from my statement of retained earnings that I just built. So my cash that we just looked at, was 15,000. Inventory under the new method is 13,000. Other assets, 275. And if I add those up, I get 303,000. Liabilities, 108,000. Common stock of 75. Retained earnings, I need to see that 
on my statement of retainering. So let's take a look at that number. We're going to use the number down here at the bottom, 120,000. So 120,000. And if I add those up, moment of truth here, oh good. I still get the 303. And now that I know it balances, I can put in my double underline. For year five, same basic process. The only difference is I don't need an as adjusted. So let's go back again. 14,000 for cash. I won't use the 30,000. I'll use the 22 for inventory. I will use the 300. I'll use the 106 for liabilities and 75 for common stock, but I won't use the 163. I'll get the new number from my statement of retainer. So cash, 14,000. Inventory under the new method is 22,000. Other assets, 300,000. If I add that up, I get 336. Liabilities, 106,000. Haven't sold any more common stocks, so that's say 75. Retain earnings, I'll get from my statement of retain earnings, that's this number right here, 155. And if I add that up, oh good, looks like we balance. I can put in my double underline. Now that wraps up step number three for doing our change in principle. Again, we started out with numbers I gave you, but the, if you were doing this yourself, you'd have to calculate what are all the balance sheet and income statement accounts balances under the new method as opposed to the old method. Step two, we took a look at new retained earnings. So we used the, the numbers that we just calculated in step one, got new net income values, new retained earnings values, and then we built the statements. And you'll notice we changed both this year's numbers away from the year five numbers that we'd originally calculated before we decided to make the change. And we went back and we restated last year's numbers. The only step left now is step number four. That's the journal entry. Yes, I'm so excited we finally get there. We're gonna do that in our next segment. I'll see you then, thanks.